Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. I'm going to help you guys to not have a freaking spaz attack here when you try and load an operating system on an external drive on your Mac. Now, this is going to stand for Apple Silicon because Intel Macs are not, as, are not a nightmare. Apple Silicon has now become a nightmare. So several months ago, you guys will know I started using a Thunderbolt drive externally as my boot drive. So I plugged it into the port, fired up my Mac, you know, did the thing, options, da, 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 let's install, okay, boom, 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 restart, you're, you're done, you set things up, you're good to go, right? Everything's peachy cream. Now Apple has thrown yet another thing into the mix. Oh my gosh. We got Mac OS 14.1.1. Now, let me just tell you, I had to call Apple today because after three or four attempts in a row, this thing says, oh, I'm putting in your OS one minute to go. All right, good. Well, you know how long that minute takes. Anyways, it goes to try and reboot, starts up, and then it reboots again, and then I'm back to my internal drive. I'm like, what the heck, right? And I'm, and of course, I'm not using a Thunderbolt drive, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're using Thunderbolt or a regular type C drive, hell, you can use one of those little laptop SSDs if you want to, if you really want a slow boot, but whatever. Anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But, I tried this on Ethernet several times, did not work. Went to Wi-Fi, because you know how security and all, because Wi-Fi is secure, Ethernet is not. So, and Apple likes security, right? All right, tried that, nope, still not working. I'm going mental here. So I called Apple and we talked about this a little bit. Now I want to show you exactly what you are going to run into and how to solve this so you don't have a coronary spaz attack. So first we need to shut down our Mac. Now keep in mind there's also one other little caveat to this. Now as you are facing your desktop computer, whether it's a Mac Pro Tower, whether it's the studio or your Mac Mini. I don't know about the laptops, how that's going to work or which port, but as you're facing the computer, the Thunderbolt port, if that's what you're using, to the far left, okay, so this away, that's the one you want to use, not the one that's going toward the Ethernet port. You need far left because the one beside the Ethernet port, by the way, is not bootable, it turns out. It's not a bootable port. It's like, it's still a Thunderbolt port. But keep in mind, when I originally set up my external Thunderbolt, I went with two of them that are up here, and the one on the left is on the far left, and it's my OS drive. The other one's my dump drive, right? So, but that's just the way I, I arranged it so that it keeps my head straight, which drive is sitting where, so this way if I need to access that port, because I only have the regular Mac Mini M1, so only two ports on the back for Thunderbolt. All right. So, for me, it was a no-brainer, but I also used to get asked for my Apple ID password. Oh, that doesn't happen anymore. Now, you're asked for your six-digit friggin' um, screen password. I'm like, okay, wait till you see this, okay? It's better to see it. So, we're going to push and hold the power button. Do not let go until you see that options menu show up with your drives. And it doesn't matter if you format your drive ahead of time or if you format it when you're going to do the OS install. It, it really makes no difference. As long as it's APFS and you name that drive whatever you want to call it. Because when you're done and your computer boots up, your internal drive will be hidden from your site. This way you keep your painty paws out of it and don't screw nothing up. So if an emergency happens, unplug your drive, reboot, sign in, and you're back up and running. Okay, so we do get access to our Bluetooth mouse, which is amazing, but our keyboard is gonna, about to go offline, so we have a USB dongle keyboard, because uh, you're going to need one, or one with a wire, and you're going to end up probably losing the mouse down the road too, if I remember right, so you're going to also need a USB dongle mouse. It's like, oh. Anyway, so here we go. Click options, hit continue. This drove me absolutely near insanity today to figure this out. So now I got to click on my name, I got to click next, and now I got to get out of the view of the camera because this password stuff is my thing. 
Okay, so, okay. Now we're in. Okay. So from here, you can format your drive if it isn't already. Okay. Or just double format it anyways. Who cares? Doesn't hurt nothing. Okay, reinstall Sonoma or fresh install, whichever. Restore time machine, you get the idea. So go up to utilities here and go to set up security, startup security utility, startup security utility. Click on that. Okay, now we notice that our Macintosh HD on the far left here is, is grayed out. We have no access to it. It is offline at this point. Okay, because it knows there's a live OS on this drive, so it disables your internal so that you don't screw with it. But we can re-enable it, don't worry. Now you have to go from here. Now this was not explained on the Apple discussion board, which I told the tech girl at Apple. I says, it would have helped to know the rest of these steps, but even still, she should have told me, I must have Wi-Fi, I must be in the far left Thunderbolt port, and I must do this next, and that's click on security policy, and you click on reduce security. Now, funny thing, when you click on reduced security, it says here, and I quote, allows any version of signed operating system software ever trusted by Apple to run. So does that mean I can go backwards as far as Catalina even, or any OS that has Apple ID sign in? That's what it says to me. I haven't tried that. That's an experiment for a later friggin' day because I've had enough of this garbage for one day. <coughs> Anyways, so I had to do that. So, Wi-Fi must be active. You must be in the far left as you're facing your computer. Okay, so the ports are to the wall. Far left Thunderbolt port, okay, and Wi-Fi, and you have to hit reduce security. Once you hit you reduce security, by the way, these grayed out ones where it says allow user management of kernel extensions from identified developers and allow remote management of kernel extensions and automatic software updates, do not put check marks in there. She even said, don't screw with that stuff unless you're a developer and you know what the heck you're doing. Otherwise, all you need to do is hit reduce security so that it'll allow you to install the OS. And I'm like, I never had to go through any of this when I did my other Mac Mini, which has Thunderbolt drives. I just plugged it into the port and loaded my OS and away I went. However, yes, I did plug into the left port. Yes, I did have Wi-Fi connection because um, you have to have Wi-Fi connection. Apple doesn't like you using Ethernet because it's not secure apparently. Uh, so we have to load our computers with Wi-Fi. It's like, I hate whatever. Anyways, now you'll notice that it is also showing default back to full security. Once the operating system is reloaded and you're back to signed in and now on your external drive, it redoes the security back to full security again. This is absolutely ridiculous, uncalled for, and just utter, I don't know what, but we shouldn't have to go through this garbage when we didn't before. And she was telling me, Oh, it's been that way for like a long time, like forever, basically, like since Big Sur for sure. And the guy who had the post up on the discussion board, he is having problems with Big Sur. Now, keep in mind, I will be honest about this. This is the first operating system, which actually, no, sorry, second. Ventura is where I started this. I started with Ventura with this external drive thing. So I don't have experience with Monterey or, or with Big Sur on Apple Silicon with external drives, okay? Intel, that's another story, and I never had these issues, period, with Intel. But now that we have the T2 security chips and we have Apple Silicon, life just got a lot harder even now with for this 14.1.1 update because I was still running um, Sonoma the last time I reloaded not that long ago on my Thunderbolt, and because you guys know I had an issue, right, with the one update, so, and I never had any of this stuff to do. I, I, I just, you know, boot up and yeah, okay, we got the iCloud lock thing. Yeah, put in your password because it's me, right? So, okay, fine, it goes through. Loads my OS, reboot, and we're good. Now it's like totally weird because now I just have to type in my screen password twice and uh, it'll have to happen again too before you're done. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, and it doesn't even ask me for Apple ID when it starts to load the OS, you know, like the normal stuff, I can just say set up Apple ID later. And I'm like, 
okay, did Apple just build in a way to bypass the cloud lock stuff? I'm kind of wondering. Okay, like, but thing is, you're going to have to be firmware updated to 14.11 before you can do anything about it, probably. I don't know. But we'll see. I Because to me, that's the way I take it, because it should have asked for that Apple Cloud stuff before I even redid this, because it did last time. But now it just wants the screen password twice. I don't know. It's weird. So now we're going to boot up. Now, this drive is a USB 3.2 Gen 2.2 case, which, for some odd reason, is now running at 1,000 uh, plus read and 1,500 write. And I'm like, okay, all of a sudden. And it's like, I don't know, but I ain't complaining. I'm getting the speed. I'm good. Um, so now we're back to the shaky, shaky, shake. And, of course, now I've got my Apple keyboard back. Um, now, the, the other funny thing, too, do not plug the, the USB keyboard in uh, when you're trying to do the OS install because it blanks your screen, leaves a cursor. You're going to have to shut down and restart because I don't know why it does that. But I should be able to unplug it at this point. So now no more USB keyboard. And now we will go off screen again for my password. I think I, no, I think I got that wrong. Ha, 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 ha. All right. So here we go. We're back up and running. And now I've got to go for the, for the next five hours of hell. <laughs> I just set up my whole computer. The only reason I went with an external drive, finally, um on this 8x256. By the time I got every possible sound file in from uh, Logic and GarageBand, um, plus, you know, iMovie was in there, uh, Keynotes, all that, then it all had to be re-updated because I went from Monterey um, into um, Sonoma straight up, right? So it's an update. So I had to re-download GarageBand and all that junk just to get them to work in case I wanted to use them. This time, um, when I, of course, reload the operating system, it's not an update. It's a full raw install. So I didn't have GarageBand, Keynotes, Pages, Numbers, and a few other programs that normally come with your brand new computer. Because this is a brand new computer when I initially set it up. And uh, so it's like, okay, fine. But now it's like I should save a bit more space. But I was down to like about 100 and... I think it was like 120 gigs or something like that. I didn't have much space left out of my 256. So I got to thinking, you know, maybe this is only going to be for music production, um, which has just enough RAM to just pull it off, at least for now. Um, you know, but if I'm going to do that, I don't need all those other programs, right? I just need what I need. So there's going to be a lot of other stuff I'm going to just rip out of this thing and delete because I'll never need them, right? Which will give me even more space, uh, but not that much more. So, but I want to keep things going for, you know, like OS updates and program updates and more sound updates and as we go along. So, but this is how you do it and not have a friggin' spaz attack, okay? Um, and it's the only way it's going to work, apparently. So, far left port, Wi Fi on. Um, and we're talking far left Thunderbolt port, okay? And it doesn't matter. This is just a Type C drive. It's not a Thunderbolt, okay? Um, and it works fine. It boots just really nice and fast. So who cares, right? Uh, and I'm not doing video editing on this. If you were going to do video editing, you would definitely need a Thunderbolt, okay? Um, and it'll help a lot more RAM because 8 gigs is not enough, all right? But for doing music, for what I'm doing for music, for the amount of tracks I use, this is going to be fine for a while. You know, I don't have to worry about it. Um, and it gives me a chance to do other experimenting that I want to do, because I think we should actually experiment with that. Any operating system? I'm going to try Catalina. I bet you it won't work, but hey, it's worth a shot. You never know. Could you, could you imagine Catalina running on a friggin' Apple Silicon? I really don't think it's going to happen, though, because I, I think they're lying about that. Any OS that was signed with your stuff, right? But, um, yeah, that's how you have to do it now if you want to run an external operating system on your Mac. And like I said, I don't know about the MacBooks, what port you would use, but anybody's guess. Meantime, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. See ya.